Hello again, and welcome back to my journey across Japan in search of interesting inks. I'm Matthew from TheWetPen.com. I arrived in Osaka on a rainy Wednesday evening. We had left Okayama that morning and taken the train east to Himeji, and spent some time exploring the castle there before continuing on. Osaka might be my favorite big city in Japan. It's beautiful and has its own unique character, but it also just seems a lot more warm and friendly than Tokyo, which can be a bit impersonal. But maybe that's just me. It was dinner time when we arrived, but after a quick stop in at my favorite hole in the wall ramen shop in Japan, we headed back to Osaka Station and the nearby Nagasawa Pen Shop. I had visited this Nagasawa the previous year, and you can get some additional details about it in that video, but this time I browsed through the selection of Kobe inks and all of their exclusives pretty quickly, and settled on a couple that I thought I'd actually use. This year I almost bought one of these bottles of Orangeet ink, and now I wish that I had, but I had just purchased an orange-themed bottle of ink the previous day, so I skipped it. But this ink is the result of a collaboration with a leather goods maker called Braleo. And then I ran across another glass pen that I couldn't resist. For a couple of years, I've had my eye on one of these glass pens with a wide calligraphy nib, and this one from Hana B Studio was really beautiful, so I bought it. The picture from the store doesn't do it justice. Let me show you this thing in a bit more detail. It came in this box with the Hana B logo on top. Hana B is Japanese for fireworks, and there was also a pretty decent Japanese movie by the same name back in the late 1990s. Anyway, Hana B Glass Studio in Yokohama is actually run by Lucas Mahoney, an American-born glass artist. He makes these pens out of high-temperature borosilicate glass. That's the strong stuff that cookware and lab equipment is made out of. If you look into the glass handle here and see those swirls, those are created by gold or silver metal fumes being worked into the glass. I don't know exactly how it's done, but the effect is stunningly beautiful. The upper half of the pen is marbled green, starting with a yellow green and then transitioning to a bluer green towards the nib. And then the grip section flares out into a ball where it meets the nib. And this is the nib that I've been looking for for years. Most glass pens have a nib that is essentially cone-shaped, but this one is much more flat, and the tip of the nib is about 2.5 millimeters wide. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, but it's also chisel-shaped, to allow for a nice narrow line in that direction. The pen is a great size for me, too. Long enough to be comfortable in my hand, but compact enough to be nimble, with a nice heft. I'll test it out with these two Kobe inks that I did pick up that evening. The first is this Nakahara Pure Blue, named after Junichi Nakahara, who was an illustrator and painter of manga dating back to the 1920s. I've never really managed to get into manga myself, but I can definitely appreciate the style of the artwork, and I really liked the design of this box. This one even has a little authenticity hologram. The second bottle that I bought was Kobe number 38, Kitanosaka Night Blue. I had intended to buy a completely different ink, but it was sold out. I'll have to get it next time, and this was my backup. So first, I'm going to try one of these inks with the glass pen. The downstroke with this pen is awesome. Getting that wide line is effortless, and the nib just glides across the paper. But with pretty much any other stroke direction, the nib is still so sharp that it grabs the paper. 
I may need to smooth it a little bit with some micro mesh or something. Now, let me swatch these inks. I'm going to swatch these on Usari, on Eerofull, and on Midori. I'll start with the Kobe number 38, Kitano Saka Night Blue. Nice. This is a really pretty blue-black that leans a little bit purple, and as it dries, it turns out that this is a dual sheener. We've got some sheen that's sort of red or purple, it's not very bright, and then, especially on the Midori, there's some striking green sheen around the edges of the heavy spots. That's pretty awesome. This is going directly into a new pen that I got in the mail yesterday. Now, let's take a look at this Nakahara Pure Blue. Okay, this is pretty much what I expected. A nice bright blue, maybe leaning a touch greener than I expected, but it looks good. And when it's dry, there's a little bit of magenta sheen too. Wait a minute, there's also a bit of green sheen around the heavy spots on this one too. I've never seen that before with an ink this color, that's really interesting. I guess this one also has dual sheen. There are lots of great pen shops in Osaka, but since I had visited them the previous year, I skipped most of them on this trip and just generally enjoyed the sights and sounds of the city. We also took day trips over to Kobe. And then up to Kyoto. But I didn't visit any pen shops in either place. Before leaving Osaka though, I did make a final stop for some ink at Pelepena. I had visited Pelepena the previous year and bought a couple bottles of ink in vase bottles, and this time, knowing that those vase bottles were just waiting there for me, I couldn't resist. I stopped in briefly and just bought this one bottle of ink, Piuma di Pavone, which means feathers of the peacock in Italian, I think. Let me show you what color it is. I'll swatch this one on the same papers one more time. Okay, this is a purple ink, and when it dries, it develops some gold bronze sheen, especially on the Eerofull and Midori papers. This one leans a little more towards the violet side on the Eerofull paper, and on the other two, it leans more towards magenta. And that was it for Osaka this time. I wanted to save my spending money for places that were new to me. And with that in mind, we took the train out of the city to the northeast, passing through some lovely hills and farmland, and stopping in the country town of Ogaki. It's really more of a small city than a country town, but still manages to have a country town feel. Before this trip, I had run across an article in this magazine called Shumi no Bungu Bako, the No Ink, No Life edition, about Kawasaki, stationary, and this man, 
Hirotsugu Kawasaki, the self-styled Baron of Ink and Color Alchemist, and the Kawasaki Stationery Shop is in Ogaki. It was a bit out of the way, I'll admit, but it was very much worth the trip. First of all, the ink shop was great once I found it on this quiet back street. In addition to selling a variety of Japanese and European inks, Kawasaki is famous for making their own inks. They have several different lines. There's a series of glittery inks in the 72 Seasons series, a Thought Experiment series, and a few lines in the Color Words series. They also have their own line of pens, and some of them are pretty awesome looking. They had a couple of binders with ink swatches and writing samples, but since I don't read Japanese, it was hard for me to match up the ink swatches with the boxes, so I finally settled on this box, but I don't really have any idea what color I have here. This should be interesting. The packaging of these inks is pretty incredible. The outer boxes are really nicely designed. This label says it's the Battlefield of Seki Gahara color collection, which is in the larger Color Words collection. And this one is the color, Sakon Shima, it looks like. And then in here, we get a paper label with the name of the ink again. And on the back side, there's some information about the ink, which I'll try to put up on the screen here. And then there's this. This is safety and handling instructions. And look at this awesome box. This family crest on the front is gorgeous. And here's the name of the ink again on the back. And inside is another box. This label says color words. And finally, here's the bottle, which is a really unusual rhombus shape. I love it when I manage to find bottles of a new shape. So let's see what color this is. I will swatch this ink on my color ring and on the same three papers as earlier. Ooh, this is gorgeous. I hope this color comes across accurately in the video. It's a grayish blue green, not too saturated, but it still manages to produce some fairly heavy red sheen. This looks like an ink that might produce some good shading too. It's a rare combination, a sheening ink that also shades well. This ink is pretty similar on all of the papers, but a little bit more saturated on the aerofoil. They had these Fujiyama Irodori inks also, and I hadn't seen them anywhere else in Japan. None of the colors really stood out to me, so I picked the Rin Purple. It's a small bottle, just 12 milliliters, but at least it's glass and the label is well done. I assumed at the time that since we were not too far from Mount Fuji, we might be getting something aimed at tourists. And if you look back here in the packaging, that's pretty well confirmed by the suggestion in English to try writing some Japanese characters with the ink. This ink is made by the Teranishi Chemical Company, the same company that makes these guitar inks, which I really like. They're very much in the same style, with the same cap design.
So let's see what the color is like. Ah, this one's really nice too. This is a cooler purple, more on the violet side, and it produces a bit of bronze sheen, which I also like. The color is pretty similar across all four papers, but it's a little bluer on the Eurofull. They also had four exclusive sailor inks named after local Ogaki attractions. These were originally in vase bottles, but the restocked inks were all in the newer square bottles. But I did find this one on the shelf still. The last of the vase bottles, as far as I know. This one is called Gekka Kuran, which is a reference to this woman, Cho Kuran, who was a poet back in the late Edo period and lived in Ogaki. She specialized in Chinese poetry, but I haven't been able to find it translated to English yet. Very nice. This is a dark red-orange. A little rusty looking maybe, but still pretty vibrant. And when it dries, there's some nice light green sheen. The color is pretty similar on all of these papers, but on the Eurofull there's more dark red. It reminds me a bit of this Indian pen sleeve. The ink itself actually reminds me quite a bit of Krishna Mumbai. Then, as I was about to check out, I saw this little box, and it wasn't too expensive, so I just grabbed it. It's labeled synesthesia on top, which is a condition in which people say that they experience sounds or music as color. This one is called Moonlight, a reference to the Beethoven Sonata. This also seems to have a little poem about the full moon. And this is just some ink safety and handling instructions. Let's see what this one looks like. Ah, this is a beautiful dusty blue. And again, even though this one isn't very saturated, it has a good amount of red sheen. How does he do that? Again, the ink is very similar on all four papers. I bet that this one will give me some good shading. As I was checking out, Mr. Kawasaki returned to the shop and I had a chance to say hello. And then Chris and I went upstairs to the attached cafe to have a cup of tea. And that was an equally wonderful experience. The woman running the cafe, first of all, spoke English perfectly, and she showed us her traveler's notebooks, and we chatted about the differences between the US and Japan's fountain pen scenes. It was all very nice. I wish that I could thank her personally here, but I don't think we ever got her name, so I'll have to leave it at that. From there, we visited the Ogaki Castle and the Historical Museum. They had a joint entry fee of about $2, and with the cherry blossoms, they were both really beautiful. And as the sun was getting low in the sky, we wandered back to the train station to continue our trip past Nagoya and further northeast, finally stopping just beyond Shizuoka in the town of Fuji.
but my visit to the ink shops of Shizuoka will have to wait until next week. It's already getting late in August, so I'm going to try to wrap up this series in the next video, but there's a lot of ground to cover, so it might be two videos. I'm also working on some other videos and making ink, so if you're interested in any of this stuff, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and of course, give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Stay safe out there, everyone, and enjoy your fountain pens and ink. I'll see you next time.